Yo, I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame Though it might be nice to own a jet plane, I'm a Hey, what is up trainers? Pogo Joel here coming at you with my Ferocious Cup video. And in this video, we're going to go over the best meta options for the Ferocious Cup. And if you haven't heard of the Sylph Arena yet, go to sylph.gg. I'll leave a link down here in the description so you can find the local tournaments in your area. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. Up first we have Umbreon with an attack stat of 126, a beefy defense of 240, and a stamina of 216. It's going to be resisting Psychic, Dark, and Ghost being a pure Dark type. It's going to be weak to Bug, Fairy, and Fighting. And in this cup it is going to be one of the top dogs for sure. Uh, with the charge moves that you want to go in there, if you can get your hands on a last resort one, that would be ideal. But if not, foul play can work for you. I would recommend unlocking another move if it wasn't for last resort. Dark Pulse is um, okay, but if I could only choose one, I'd choose foul play if I don't have my hands on that last resort. Umbreon there from Community Day last year. And if you're thinking about evolving one, uh, maybe you have a good PvP IV Eevee that you could turn into an Umbreon. You might want to consider waiting. We might get a uh, two-year anniversary community day in December 2019, so hopefully that might be an option there. But if you do want to evolve a good PvP IV Umbreon, let's say maybe you have more than one, you can definitely go for it. There have been people who won tournaments with only foul play, so you can definitely get by with only foul play in your pocket. So Umbreon is going to be one of the top choices if you don't have one you will see other teams with them so be prepared for it it's going to be extremely weak to fairy so those charm users are really here to stop this guy next we have a lowland radicate with an attack of 135 a defense of 154 and a stamina of 181 it is a normal and dark type pokemon making it resisting ghost psychic and dark weak to bug fairy and extremely weak to fighting with the charge moves you do have a little bit of choice uh, people are using this as a replacement to umbreon um, definitely could serve you in that role it is uh, tanky in some situations uh, crunch you're definitely going to want and then uh, hyper beam or hyper fang uh, up to you uh, hyper fang is the one most people are using as a two bar move uh, if you want a one bar nuka move you can go hyper beam i have played around with both of them hyper fangs just a little more reliable than hyper beam up next we have skunk tank with an attack of 184 a defense of 132 and a stamina of, of a beefy 230 it is a poison and dark type pokemon making it resisting dark, ghost, grass, poison, and psychic. Its only weakness going to be to ground. And then with the charge moves, you do have some options to play around with. Crunch is uh, necessary. And then for the secondary move, that's where you have some wiggle room. You can go sludge bomb to give it that extra poison move, or you can go flamethrower, which will help you against the ice types that you might see and also help you out in the mirror matchup against another skunk tank so definitely want to play around with it and you definitely want poison jab as the fast move skunk tank is a soft counter to our charm and fairy users so it's definitely a good generalist as well can definitely put the hurt in and keep up shield pressure with crunch so definitely keep an eye out for that skunk tank up next we have Vaporeon, a pure water type Pokemon with an attack of 205, defense of 161, and a stamina of a beefy 277. It is a pure water type, making it weak to grass and electric types, and it's going to be resisting fire, ice, steel, and water. Now with the charge moves on this guy, well you want water gun as a fast move, but the charge moves, uh, you're going to go Aqua Tail for sure, that's going to be your fast spammy move. And for your charge move, here's where you have some more wiggle room, maybe. If you're fortunate enough to have a last resort uh, one from Community Day last year, that is going to be very good for you. Um, that's probably the better version to run. But if you don't, no worries. You can definitely run an Aqua Tail Hydro Pump uh, Vaporeon, and that's totally fine. That works out really well. 
Uh, you, you do lose some of the matchups, or just very few matchups that you would pick up with Last Resort. But Last Resort, a lot more spammier. Uh, Hydro Pump, a lot more nuking. And that's going to require a little more shield baiting to make sure you do actually uh, get what you need to get. And get lucky and hit that Hydro Pump. So you do have some options there. The Hydro Pump being the big nuke move. And Last Resort being a very neutral hard hitting move in the meta. Up next we have the Barrel with an attack of 162, a defense of 119, and a stamina of 188. It is a normal and water type Pokemon, going to be weak to electric, fighting, and grass, resisting ghosts, fire, ice, steel, and water. Its charge moves, you're going to want Surf, and you're going to want Hyper Fang. I'm not sure why they're suggesting Hyper Beam a little bit higher on... Um, PV poke but uh, you want the two bar charge move for sure just because uh, this will kind of act as a last resort Vaporeon and Surf actually hits a little bit harder than the actual Aqua Tails so a little more of a threat there these things can be tanky it's only 10,000 Stardust to unlock the secondary move it might cost you a bit to power up but if you find a Babarel in your team or against you watch out this thing can hit pretty hard that hyper Fang is pretty neutral to almost everything in the meta. Up next we have Suicune, a pure water type Pokemon with an attack of 180, defense of a beefy 235 and stamina of a 225. It's going to be weak to electric grass and it's going to be resisting fire, ice, steel and water. With the charge moves you can't get away from it, you're going to need to unlock both moves. You're going to need Bubble Beam. Bubble Beam is a awesome move because it has a 100% chance to decrease the attack of your opponent by one stage. So every time you're getting off a Bubble Beam on your opponent, you're lowering their attack by one stage. For the ideal move set, you're going to want Snarl. It's going to charge up your charge moves very quickly. And then you're going to want Bubble Beam and Hydro Pump. You're going to need to invest in both those moves to be efficient here. Bubble Beam is the best supporting move here. Uh, Suicune is the best supporting Pokemon in the game. If you are firing off those Bubble Beams, you're lowering those attacks and making it so much easier for your Pokemon to take out the others. So Suicune, a great supporter in the Ferocious Cup. Next, we have our charming little fellow here. Alolan Ninetales, an ice and fairy type Pokemon with an attack of 170, a defense of 193, and a stamina of 177. It's going to be weak to fire, poison, rock, and steel. Look at that double weakness there. And then over on the resistances, we are resisting dragon, bug, dark, and ice with a double resistance to dragon there. And uh, what we're really using Ninetales for is going to be that charm. It's the best charm user in the game. So that's going to be your number one check to Umbreon and the other dark tanks that are in the uh, cup here. And then from there, you do have an option if you wanted to try to switch it up and not use charm. Um, I, I don't recommend it. I mean, you could play around with it if you wanted to, but then you would need to have at least two charm users. So you can go with like Snarl if you want, but not necessary. Psyshock's probably going to be the move you can utilize the most if you can't afford a secondary move. If you can, go Ice Beam. Ice Beam is going to be uh, a hard hitting move that you do get stab on, unlike Psyshock. And sometimes it might just be better to charm down Pokemon and not even fire a move. Um, but you'll have to play around with your Alolan Ninetales to see where it lands here. So you definitely want Charm as the fast move. Um, the other fast moves are Faint Attack and Powder Snow, but they're not the best here for you. Next we have Granbull, a pure fairy type Pokemon with a nice attack stat of 212, a defense of 131, and a stamina of 207. It's going to be weak to Poison and Steel, resisting Dragon, Bug, Dark, and Fighting. For the fast moves, you're going to want to go Charm. You could switch it up and go Snarl. And for the charge moves, you're going to want Crunch. And if you can afford it, Close Combat. But I think this one, you're good to go with just Crunch. If you're going to be running the Charm variant and use it as a Charm user, for sure, you probably aren't getting a Close Combat. This thing is kind of squishy, and I... 
hate it because I really love my shiny. It does get to 1500 beautifully. It's actually not that bad PvP ranked, uh, but just a little too squishy for my tastes here. Next we have the little electric beast Minum with an attack of 147, a defense of 150, and a stamina of 155. It's a pure electric type Pokemon so its only weakness is going to be to ground resisting electric, flying, and steel. Now for the fast move you're definitely going to want spark. Um, don't try quick attack, I think that's not going to be beneficial for you. Spark's going to get your charge moves moving a lot faster. And then in the charge move department you're going to want to go thunderbolt and discharge. Some people are playing around with Swift just because they want to have a little bit of neutral coverage against stuff. Swift is not that energy efficient. Thundershock, I mean, sorry, Thunderbolts and Discharge are going to be a lot better for you. Now, its main role is really to counter these water type Pokemon in the meta, but uh, what Minum has a leg up on from the other electric types is it actually, with the right shield play, can take down Umbreon's and if the Umbreon is a bad PvP IV Umbreon like one of those last resort ones that someone just powered up it can definitely take you so be careful this thing could be tanky in the right situations but also at the same time can be squishy so take note of the power of Minum. Next we have Cantonian Raichu with an attack of 193, defense of 151, and stamina of 155. It's a pure electric type, only weak to ground. Now you can have a legacy Thundershock one which will help you charge up your moves. You can surprise people by bringing it in with Charm, and if you don't have any of that, don't want to use Charm, you can go in with Spark. All of these work. The charge moves, you're going to want Brick Break for coverage on those normal types that are in the cup and things that are weak to. Uh, fighting like ice and wild charge you could also go thunderbolt as well and wild charge but uh, brick break wild charge is best bet up next we have the Alolan Raichu with an attack of 201 defense of 154 and stamina of 155 it is electric and psychic so it's gonna be weak to bug dark ghost and ground with the charge moves you have some options wild charge and psychic are my favorite move sets for this uh, you can go Thunder Punch to be spammy as well. If you do pick up that Psychic, you'll have coverage against Needle King and Needle Queen if those do come up against you since you're so weak to ground. And when you do get that Psychic off, it could be a big surprise. Not a lot of people are expecting that and you do pick up the stab there as well. So look out for Alolan Raichu. Next we have my favorite anti-water option. The Linoon with an attack of 142, a defense of 128, and a stamina of 186. It's a pure normal type. It's going to be weak to fighting, so look out for those counter users. It's going to resist Ghost. And then uh, for the fast moves, you definitely want Shadow Call. That charges up a lot faster than any of the moves here. And then for the charge move, you do have some options. I prefer Grass Knot. That covers all the water options. Dig will cover um, things that are work weak to ground, so there's going to be um, some coverage there. I mean, you could go Thunder, it charges up just as fast as Grass Knot. The only problem I have with Dig is it takes a little bit longer for it to charge up than Grass Knot. Um, so it could make you a little bit predictable, but if you do uh, farm up a bit, you'll have that option to surprise your opponent. Uh, Light Noon does max out near level 40 for some IVs and some IVs like very close or if not at 40. Um, so play around with Linoon. It's a pretty cool option there and does provide you a lot of coverage. Next we have some anti-electric, anti-fairy options that are going to be ground type Pokemon. So up first we have Donphan, a pure ground type Pokemon with an attack of 214, a defense of 185, and a stamina of 207. It's going to be weak to grass, ice, and water, resisting electric, poison, and rock. That double resistance to electric there, so watch out. And then with Donphan, you're going to want to have Counter, Heavy Slam, and Earthquake. Donphan is one of two Pokemon, I believe, that can learn Counter, and it's actually the most useful Counter user in the game. It can learn Charm, but I do not recommend it as a Charm user. And then we have Pillow Swine with an attack of 181, 
defense of 138 and a stamina of 225. It's going to be ice and ground, weak to fighting, fire, grass, steel, water, and resisting electric and poison. The ideal move set here, powder snow, avalanche, and stone edge as an option there. But I prefer bulldoze as the second move there, just so you have that ground coverage that you need. And then we have Cantonian Sandslash with an attack of 182, defense of 175, and stamina of 181. A pure ground type Pokemon. But this is going to be the fastest Earthquake user in the game. It runs Mudshot, so it's going to be getting off Earthquakes a lot faster than these other Pokemon and Bulldoze. And if you're lucky enough to get the Shadow one, which I hear is very difficult to get, um, you purify it. Return is going to be a very good move for this meta. Next we have the Steel type Pokemon which are here to counter those fairies. We have Alolan Zanslash first, a Ice and Steel type Pokemon. You're going to be wanting to run Ice Punch, Gyro Ball or Bulldoze as your charge moves, Powder Snow as the fast move. Then we go over to Lyron which is a Steel and Rock type Pokemon. Lyron is a pretty tanky guy. You're going to want to run Metal Claw, Rock Slide, and Body Slam. You have that Body Slam spam to get off moves very quickly. And you can destroy Lola Ninetales and any of the other uh, Charmers. So I do like Lyron there. We have Agron with Smackdown, Heavy Slam, and Stone Edge. All going to be very great uh, going up against these other Pokemon with the neutral some Macdown damage there. Next we have the others section. We have the Shelgon, the best dragon type in this meta that's actually viable. You're gonna definitely want to run Dragon Breath, Flamethrower, Twister, or Dragon Pulse for your dragon move. They're an expensive secondary move, 75,000 Stardust but a good option to uh, annihilate the water type Pokemon and just give you a lot of neutral coverage there. We have Furret, a normal type that is going to be weak to fighting but has some interesting coverages uh, having access to uh, Brick Break. And then we have Delcaddy, another normal type Pokemon that uses Charm, Disarming Voice as a very fast spammy uh, fairy move and then Wild Charge as a surprise attack move. Some really great options here. Dalcaddy, another expensive one. You need a 100% because that maxes out at 1496. So uh, some interesting Pokemon for the Ferocious Cup. There you have it, trainers. The Ferocious Cup meta. If you find anything helpful, please drop a like, subscribe, and let me know down there in the comments which Pokemon are you looking at for the Ferocious Cup. And if you made it this far, thank you so much. Comment down there. Let me know. Shout out to you guys in the comments if you let me know. Until next time, laters raiders.